Hey, some sunshine today. And wow, there's so many people outside. What's going on? Just too much rain, I guess. It's like the first opportunity you have. Get out there! And what was going on today? I was actually thinking about all that news about the remote ID in the US and how even potentially things like the Mavic Mini 1 or the Mini 2, you won't be exempt because according to some of those rules, you're going to have to have something like a propeller guard in order to protect people because they can't lacerate the skin, if I remember correctly, in terms of the guidelines. So if you have to put something like a prop guard on the Mavic Mini 2, since it's about 249 grams, it's going to go over the 250 gram threshold. So you won't be able to fly this, for example, in an exempt manner. So with that in mind, a lot of people were saying, OK, I guess companies like DJI, they're going to go to the drawing board. You're going to think, how can we make this thing under 250 grams with the propeller guards? And I thought it just seemed like everyone's overlooking this. So I guess I'll be the first. There's already a Mavic Mini 1 and a Mini 2 that's under 250 grams with the propeller guards. It actually comes down to just the battery weight. Because if you guys remember, even I said when the Mini 1 came out, I was saying how oh, it doesn't shoot 4K and everything like that. You might as well just make the battery lighter in order to do that. There's actually a version in Japan. It's actually 199 grams. And the reason it weighs less is because of the battery. Now in Japan, the weight threshold is different. That's why they made it 199. And the propeller guards is 23.5 grams for the first one. And they said you can actually use it for things like the US or the Japanese one. Even the one designed for the Mini 2 is just a little bit heavier, but still. In combined total, it's about 222 grams if you put this propeller guard. So you could technically get away with that, so to speak, in terms of making the Mini 1 or the Mini 2 under 250 grams. Pretty simple fix in terms of the battery, right? Although you can't necessarily just buy this battery from Japan, to my understanding. It's just like general export rules when it comes to things like batteries. Because even if you go to the DJI site, it'll say it's not available in your country, which I'm pretty sure if you use something like a VPN or something, then you'll see everything pop up. But essentially the difference between the batteries is the one that we're used to is about 2400 milliamps and the one in Japan is 1100 milliamps. So again, you get a trade-off with less flight time and all that. The design of the battery is virtually the same too, so you should be able to pop it in or out both versions. The main difference is the capacity. Although two things to keep in mind, the regulations won't be implemented immediately in the US, so you should just run out immediately and say, oh, I need to buy this battery now. So who knows if things could potentially change. And there's still that iffy detail about what kind of airspace you're flying because just based on what they wrote, anything literally outside like in a regular area, regardless of what you fly, could fall under a situation where you would need the remote ID. But at least this eliminates the factor of the weight if that's a concern and that should show you how easy it is for the company to make it less than 250. As well, if you're thinking of doing this, you shouldn't necessarily just buy the Japanese version because to my understanding, there's different radio frequencies and all that. So those laws and regulations may be different. The batteries itself, that should be more straightforward if you can get your hands on that if you need to. I still think it's a little silly treating, quote, I guess, toys in many cases as if it's a huge manned aircraft saying it's all for safety and all that, which doesn't really make sense. Which made me think because I just read this article quickly. This one says, Plane crash deaths rise in 2020 despite COVID pandemic. How do you figure with no airplanes or whatever flying or less? How's there more accidents? It says here, more people died in commercial plane crashes in 2020. An industry group has said despite the number of flights plummeting due to the pandemic, Dutch aviation consultancy TL70 found that 299 people were killed in the commercial crashes worldwide last year, rising from 257 in 2019. And according to this, it says there was a 42% reduction in flights. How do you figure? Well, apparently there was some factors like that one about the Ukraine airline being shot down before. That was a factor, I guess, in terms of the deaths. But it kind of shows you where it's pretty consistent so far with the things I read, where if you're talking about things like death and all that, that should be the priority. It just seems like that gets swept under the rug. But for things, I guess, like the drone, no deaths or whatever, but for some reason, oh man, need to regulate this immediately, like in such a harsh manner, that doesn't make sense.
All right, see you guys later.